I'm an international master trainer for Devonest. And today's presentation is from the We Care, we Care project and it's how to stay safe and hygiene uh, measure you have to take in the salon. And this presentation here is, uh, it's very long to be honest with you. There's a lot of things written and you can also get it uh, from the distributor very soon uh, if you're interested in the information in there. Uh, what I've done here, I put together information from all over the world. So um, from the from Asia to America, from Europe to the South America. So a lot of uh, different kind of rules from the different kind of governments. So I think really when we've been through this presentation here, uh, you should be quite uh, safe in uh, whatever you can do because I think I managed to, to put in everything that uh, you need to do in the salon. Anyhow, if you have some tips and ideas yourself, uh, you're welcome to, to write them uh, or pop them in later uh, because then I'm always open to add more into my information here. So anyhow, I will start the presentation. So I hope you're going to enjoy and uh, please feel free to write in the chat or you can also just uh, talk in here. I have already unmuted you all, I hope. What is beauty? A concept? An abstraction? An emotion? Sometimes an instant that feels like an eternity. A secluded corner inside of us, roused by the wind, or the smell of the sea, or by a song coming from afar. No matter how or when it comes to us, it's always a captivating moment when our heartbeat matches the beat of the universe. And we discover that we can impact the world by spreading our affection for the landscape that we've carried within us since we were born. And so there's no need for fences. We need only respect and awareness and the kind of reverence reserved for the wisest and eldest of us. Because... We are the keepers. again welcome to the class ladies and gentlemen my name is Brian Su I'm an inter international master trainer for Devonness and today we're going to talk about the reopening of the salon and I have a quite long presentation for you with a lot of text inside but I'm not going to sit here and read it I'm just going to talk from the slices I see here just to give you some advice what you have to take care of when you're gonna open the salon after the COVID-19. So first of all, it's very important we maintain the hygiene in uh, the salon as always. But uh, I can see as a trainer, I've been traveling around the world uh, the last uh, many years. I must also admit, I also see that the hygiene standards um, 
doesn't exist so strong anymore in all countries around the world. So uh, this is where we have created this presentation for you to really think about uh, what actually gonna go on in the salon. Because in the salon is a perfect uh, situation where we can transfer different kind of uh, viruses, parasites, bacteria, fungi uh, through our tools, the way we're using them, especially if we don't really take care of them and really try to uh, clean them every time. So, Every time now we really have to focus on this with the, the coronavirus because now we want to make the clients very safety or feel safety to go to work, but even also for us to have to be in the salon working there, it also has to be a safe uh, space for all of us. So now we really have to look into all the tools that we're using that we really try to take care of them and really um, sterilize everything we're using every time we touch it because that's what the clients are expecting and that's actually what we should do um, always but i guess it's something we maybe need to reconsider again to be stronger in our hygiene procedure in the salon so first of all we recommend you to make a daily um, salon hygiene checklist that you have in the salon uh, that cover all the teams who do what and how many times during the day because this is very very important with the coronavirus um, that you see now First of all, we need to find out who is responsible for the different kind of practice in the salon. And I know that some of you may be, um, I mean, we have different kind of uh, salons around the world. We have different kind of level and standard salons around the world. I was in India last year and there they have people to do everything. Some making coffee, some is cleaning and so on, so on. So there they are super lucky. In Denmark, where I'm original from, if we have somebody hired for only that, they actually have the same salary as a hairdresser. That means I need to even work more to afford to have those people working my salon. So in many salons also, this is the things we have to do ourselves, right? So we have to be very sure that everybody is aware of the new role they will have in the salon, because if everybody help each other, it'll be much easier, especially in the beginning. Uh, I must admit, some of this uh, presentation done here is also some recommendation I done from my sister because when I talked with her after the first week, she was totally exhausted after to be to work. Not because she said I've been away now for one month, but because she had to rethink everything she do in the salon. Every time she had a client, she had to think about or get into doing exactly the same procedure because otherwise it gets too uh, overwhelming and you, uh, you cannot uh, see the light on, on the end of the tunnel, that's for sure. So first of all, we need to be sure that everything is very uh, clean and highly hygienic in the salon. So that means everything from the waiting area, the sofa where the clients are sitting, the console where we're working, um, the mirror, the chair, the floor around it, uh, where we're gonna do the backwash, so we're gonna use that. Every time we need to clean uh, all those kind of things. First of all, uh, it's very important when you're gonna maintain the salon equipment in the salon, contact your local provider of all your furniture to understand what kind of cleaning um, agents you can use. Because sometimes again, when we have the PVC or vinyl on the chairs where the client's seated, if you use a wrong uh, cleaning um, product, we can actually ruin the chair, right? And then we know if this first they start to get broken the surface, that's where bacteria also can start to grow and we can again have another problem coming through the salon. So really check those kind of things, what kind of material, uh, what kind of product you can use for the cleaning of all your equipment in the salon. Every time the tools have any contact with you or the client, you need to be sure it's disinfected after the use, okay? So this is very important. Um, First of all, also we need to be sure that uh, when we have cleaned um, uh, everything in the salon, that we also maintain it clean the way it is. So also not just clean things and put it back together with a lot of other things. I think now it's really important that we try to keep things really, really separated. So brushes stay one place, combs one place and so on. So we don't mix things together because that makes it much easier for you to uh, clean things. First of all, we also need to uh, be sure from, uh, to avoid cross-contamination in the salon that also need to talk with the clients about uh, if they have any kind of uh, feel, uh, what we can say, uncomfortable uh, in the last um, few days. Because this is something that's very important when we talk with them, uh, especially when they're gonna um, have the um, appointment, or sometime we know the appointment is maybe 10 days to go, they need to be sure that if you feel any kind of um, sickness or don't feel well, they have to cancel the appointment because otherwise uh, we cannot really control it how we're going to go in the salon. 
So what kind of tools are needed for the salon? First of all, disinfection for uh, tools, you need to buy that. You need, of course, the jars for the tools, which I see now in many salons that don't have any more. So if you remember in the old barber salons, you have those uh, glass jars where you have all the combs inside. All this we need to bring back again, I'm quite sure. Disposable gloves, we for sure will need. Uh, hand soap and sanitizer need to be, of course, everywhere, especially the sanitizer you need to have on the console, where the waiting area is in the reception desk. And even in um, my sister's salon, she have a kind of like a front gate where the clients come through. And out there, that's where they actually start to disinfect the, the hands because when they're gonna touch the door handle, then they're already kind of like sanitized in that way around. Why I'm saying this is because it can actually help you to not to clean so much because you can imagine if the clients cannot really sanitize their hands before they touch the entrance door, that means literally every time somebody touches the, the, the handle, we need to clean it again. So it's just to avoid to get too much to clean. Uh, each client needs, of course, to have a clean towels. Every time you, you are in contact with a client, you cannot recycle the towels anyhow, or you use paper towels, which is easier because you can throw them away very easily. You need antibacterial surface cleaner, that's for sure. And they have to be with at least 70% of alcohol when you buy those kind of products. Less is uh, some countries, of course, have different kind of, of uh, rules and to follow. But what I can see is uh, the highest uh, recommend is 70%. You need a beauty coach roll and clean covers also for all the uh, things in the salon. So we really are prepared for that. Washing the hands is something we all need to really uh, pay attention to. Quite now, I think we all stay in our own houses, so we maybe don't wash our hands so much uh, because we are in one family or we are by ourselves. But now when we get back to the salon, we really need to get into washing the hands every time we get in, con in contact with people. Things we have to be sure about is like, don't touch your nose, don't touch your ears, don't touch your mouth, and literally don't touch your face because that's where you really can uh, expose yourself for the coronavirus. You also need to, of course, wash your hands every time you prepare food and every time you have any kind of contact with contaminated surface. And uh, every time example, you have been sneezing or you're coughing in your hand, of course, we need to get rid of those uh, procedures. We need to find another way. So I must admit now, example, in Devonis, when I go to office now, we have to follow a different way to do things. Example, we have to, to cough, we have uh, to either, first of all, we have a mask on in office, but anyhow, you have to do it in your arms or whatever to be sure we're not gonna spread it out everywhere, right? So we need to have those um, things in mind. So key times to wash your hands. If you're not sure know that already, ladies and gentlemen, of course, before and after doing preparing food, before eating always, before and after we treating cut or wounds, which can happen sometimes, after toilet use, of course, every time you blow the nose, coughing, sneezing, and every time, of course, we touch garbage. This is the perfect way to transfer all kinds of germs. So really take care of that. I must admit myself, um, Working in an office, stuff like that. Yeah, we always, I touch my own computer. So I maybe not every time when I went to lunch, I, f I remember to, to clean my hands, to be honest with you guys. But now after this virus, I really now wash my hands every time, even now here when I stay in my house, I really try to, uh, to clean my hands as much as possible. Also, it's better to get used to always have the same steps to do things because if we don't have the same steps to do things, that's where we start to missing out things and we forget sometimes to do the things. So first of all, how to clean your hands. And uh, I was very surprised when I started to, to look into how to clean your hands, actually what the actor recommends. So first of all, we wet them, we apply the soap and we really have to rub the hands really well together. And you can even use the, you remember the old nail brushes we used to have in our grandparents' house for really put, uh, cleaning the, the nails underneath. Even those you can start to use. You need to wash your hands for minimum 20 seconds to be sure you kill all kind of the coronavirus because otherwise it can actually still stay on your hands. And uh, here actually there is, uh, what is 20 seconds? can be hard to, to tell, but if you uh, hum the uh, happy birthday song two times from, end to, from beginning to end, that's actually gonna be 20 seconds. Rinse very well, of course, your hands, and then again, you have to uh, uh, towel dry them. And here I will really recommend you uh, buy a really good hand cream at the same time, because you will have really dry hands. I can see that from uh, other colleagues I know in Denmark, a uh, hairdresser, they start to a lot of problem with the, the hands because they clean the hands so much. So buy a really good hand cream. 
moisturizing cream. The best thing is always to wash your hands, both for you, but even for the clients. You'll find out a bit later why I'm saying this. So this is also very important that always recommend the clients, wash the hands. If they not have access to wash the hands, then you can use a hand gel. Devils now have produced a hand gel which have 65% of alcohol inside that you can order. But it's, of course, it'll kill the germs and stuff like that. But what I can see when I'm reading things is they still recommend the hand washing is the best solution for the client, okay? If you use the gel, you need to uh, rub it into the hands and use it for around 20 seconds so it really gets absorbed very well and easily. So, what we also recommend, um, you need actually, I can see somebody writing something here. Uh, oh, hand balm the best. Ah, oh, thank you, Rock. <laughs> yeah, we actually have a very nice uh, hand cream already. Hem and uh, oh, it could be a good solution. Uh, before I said 15 minutes to take care of your client. I can see from a hairdresser I'm talking with that's already opened the salon, you need to add 15 minutes in between all the clients. 10 minutes is not enough. Um, because there's so many things you get, to, you have to do in the beginning. You have to get used to the new way to do things. So I can see average is 15 minutes what people recommend. You need to add that extra time in all your bookings. Okay. So cleaning area. So where we need, need to pay a lot of attention, where we have maybe a lot of people in contact with the same uh, area, it can be the reception area. So every time we, um, we clean, uh, we have you know, use the phone, we need to clean it. So always have a sanitizer standing there so you can clean the phone every time. The keyboard of the computer needs to be cleaned very well every time. Maybe not every time you use it, but at least two, three, four times during the day, really clean it very well. And then generally, I would say, in the reception hour, remove everything you don't need because the less things you have, the much simpler and easier is it for you to clean, okay? And this is really, really uh, important to understand. So example, if you have like some, um, uh, example where you have the pen standing and the pen holder, if you have a lot of old uh, pens there, throw them away. Just have like a few pens there so you're done or uh, even a better things if you are, we can say in some salons, maybe some staff member can be more uh, anxious to go back to work. So you can actually give everybody have their own pen with a specific color. So everybody, when you're gonna example, write something in the booking book, or if you write on the computer, depending on what kind of system you have, of course, you feel maybe a little more safe that you're using your own things. Uh, again, the pen holder have to be cleaned at least, I would say every day for sure to avoid any kind of uh, transfer of um, uh, bacteria and stuff like that. Let me see here what is writing. Good points. Yeah, thank you, Anna. Um, because again, I think it's, um, it's about to make uh, the clients feel safe in the salon, my staff in the salon, and even myself, right? So we need to really think large about all those kind of things. The reception desktop, you need to clean every time the clients have been in contact with it. So we really have to watch out how often the clients touching the the desk. The best thing is literally to sell to the clients, please don't touch our surfaces because the more they're touching, the more we have to clean. So I've been to some shops here in uh, Parma. Uh, actually, it was very, uh, there was a green shop where we can buy uh, things for the garden. And they did actually something nice. They put up a wire half meter away from the desk so nobody can touch the desk because they were, she said, I'm so tired of cleaning this lady. She said, it's just like you clean and clean and clean. You forget your focus of your business because cleaning become your business, not to take care of the clients. So she put up that. So that could be another way you could do, find a really nice kind of a lead or rope and put like a little distance for the desk so the clients cannot really touch the desk. You need, of course, also to clean uh, the um, credit card holder. So everything the clients are in contact with, you need to clean that. And even what you can do to be super, super safe is we can say credit cards, of course, that can still be a risk, right? So you could even just have a tissue paper with the um, hygienic um, alcohol on that you can grab the, the credit card with and that way you clean it at the same time. So you all stay safe. Just some extra things you can think about when you're gonna uh, open up the salon. As I said before, remove everything that you don't need on the, um, the reception desk because it makes it much easier to clean. Recommendation to clean the very well the desk three times a day just to be sure that you stay safe. 
So the maintenance of the salon, we need, uh, as I said before, 70% of alcohol you need to have. You can use up to 90%. I saw in Asia, they recommend up to 90%, but when you have 90% alcohol, it can also ruin many things. So really uh, be aware of what kind of uh, cleaning agents you're using, uh, depending on the alcohol it might be inside, okay? So we recommend to clean uh, frequent touch surfaces. So that could be like the toilet, the locker, the toilet door handle. After each visit, it has to be clean. The entrance door handle, as I said before, and the surface around it. The floor around the working station after each client. The chair, the console, the mirror after each client. Each shampoo station after each client. The back mirror after each client. The salon trolleys three times a day, really clean them very well and the salon flow with disinfection two to three times a day if you want really to have a high, high standard in your salon. Of course, I also want to say you have to follow what the government uh, recommend because each government have different kind of recommendation all over the world, okay? So this is very important to have in mind. Uh, going back to the toilet, I want to just give you uh, tips and the tricks depending on what kind of salon you have. I talked to my sister and um, she said to me, yeah, and I tell you when they're gonna use the toilet, uh, there is a disinfection spray and they have to disinfect the toilet before they use it and after just to be sure everybody stays safe. And I said, okay, what do they say about that? I mean, they have to clean the toilet themselves. And she said, yeah, because you know what, Brian, I am so busy to do so many things. So if I also have to clean the toilet when they use the toilet, I don't know how to, to do it. I mean, it's too much for me and my staff. So literally tips and tricks, you could maybe say to the clients to be safe as possible. You unfortunately have to do this yourself if you want to use the toilet. Just you know, a tips and tricks for you guys. Unless you have somebody to do it for you, of course, luxury things at the moment. You can use ultraviolet light for the sanitation. So you can get those machines that actually can stand with the lamps rotation in the salon and this you can do overnight. So they actually should eliminate bacteria and viruses and they're also disinrupting the DNA. That's the way they work, they're working those machines. And you can also buy those if you want to, again, have a super, super high standard in your salon. Health and safety is important too, of course. So first of all, stylists uh, can have different kind of protection needs. And again, here I want to say it's very individual from country to country what they recommend. In Denmark, example, they don't recommend the mask. Uh, they don't recommend the gloves. So it's up to each person what they want to do by themselves. There's nothing by law there. Uh, but first of all, we need to wash our hands every time we come to work. We need to get used to wash our hands before we start to do anything. Then you can wear your protection of the, the mouth and the nose. There can be, the, again, different kind of masks recommended from each government. So please look into that yourself. What is your recommend? Uh, what is the government recommended? Don't, uh, of course, shake hands with the clients. I know that, um, except me, I've been alone here for eight weeks. It could be nice just to touch somebody, right? Because we are a little bit like, oh my goodness, this social things is missing. But again, here, yeah, don't shake hands with the clients. A nice way you can do the gesture example, it could be just put a hand on your heart and just bow a little bit. So that could be a new way to welcome your clients in the salon and to still feel it's a nice way to come. Also try to avoid any kind of touching of the skin of the client. So don't put, example, the hands on the neck uh, when you're talking with them. Um, me, myself, I'm one of those that sometimes come over to clients. We're not seen for a while. I put a hand on the neck and say, how are you doing? And then, uh, you know, we have to get rid of those. We cannot say it's bad habits, but the old habits we used to have. Don't touch your face while you do uh, treatments to the clients, because again, that could be a cross-termination or at least go and clean your hands before you're gonna touch any things of your face, okay? In case you do that, you have to remember, if I touch my face now, I have to touch the client, I need to disinfect my hands in between. So again, we need to get into those new ways to work. When you example, have to cough during the service, if you don't wear a mask, example, and you by coincidence put uh, the hands in front of your mouth, which is the most normal action we're doing, you have to go and wash your hands again before you continue your work. Here also we recommend you, especially maybe in the beginning, to uh, help each other out to say, oh, remember you have to, ah, yeah, that's true. Because sometimes we maybe just forget it that second and then the client's sitting there, maybe, oops, what's going on, no? So try also to help each other to, you know, do small reminders so we don't forget to do things. Apron, of course, you can use a normal apron as you want, but of course, most, uh, most uh, government actually recommend disposable aprons. So you can use uh, plastic aprons and then you can throw them away. 
Uh, gloves, of course, you can uh, replace them if you use them for cutting because some countries, they recommend that you have to wear gloves uh, the whole day in the salon. So whatever you shampoo the hair, whatever you're gonna cut the hair, you need to wear gloves. So again here, you can also use this in fixing spray to clean them hands and to, uh, excuse me, sterilize them in that case. Uh, Regarding, uh, sorry, um, regarding the gloves, also in some uh, countries there could be some recommendation what kind of gloves you need to use to buy. So also check that out yourself when you're gonna open up in your salon. Then of course, working tools uh, we have in the salon, we need to sterilize all the tools we have been working with. And you can either use alcohol, you can also use a uh, strong sulfur uh, water, or you can use the UV sterilizer at the same time also, if you have that in the salon. You need to sterilize the blow dryer, the clippers, the wire every time you use it. So again, think about when you use the, the different kind of um, machines that you need to clean them. Every evening, we recommend that you leave all the tools in alcohol, or you can again use a very strong uh, dishwasher, uh, dishwasher um, soap and hot water and leave them overnight to so really kill all the kind of germs. And of course, in this case, is most important is the virus that we want to for sure avoid in the salon. The personal things also, so example, your phone, your cell phone, we need also to clean that. I know a lot of us, we sit with our phones, but maybe now is the time to get used to in while we're in the salon. Don't grab your phone every time you have a break because you have to again clean everything. So we need to think more about what we're doing in the salon when we don't uh, have clients. Recommendation how to unplug uh, your phone. So of course here, uh, unplug, you cannot have it inside when you clean it and stuff like that, but I'm sure you all know all, uh, already about that, so um, I'm not going to go into that. Another thing that's very important is also like your water bottle. A lot of people now have the, the water bottle with them. Really be sure you clean it so it's uh, uh, washed every night. So bring it home and then you uh, put in the dish machine so sure you kill all again the bacteria that could be on your water bottle. And also for those of you that may be used to have a water bottle standing on the, um, the working station uh, because you need to drink during your, your work, uh, please remove that because again, it's something you need to wash and wash again. So clean every time. So again, remember as before, the less things you have around you, the less you have to clean, okay? When it comes to the food and snacks for, uh, for the staff example, so where you're sitting and having your lunch or your breaks, really keep it in uh, tight containers and remove everything on the table like bread, crumbles, whatever that can be there. I have been in so many salons where, um, with all respect for everybody having salons, they look amazing clean outside, but when you get into the room where the staff member is sitting and having breaks, the table sometimes a little bit full of different kind of things. So now we really need to be sure everything is clean, more perfect, so clean a nice order. Every time you use a plate or a cup, cutlery, clean it immediately, don't leave it anywhere. Wash your hands again as often as possible. And then another thing you can do is also you can write your name on your glass or the cup to avoid any kind of mistakes in the salon. Also, that could be another way to be sure that you're not gonna have any kind of contamination with each other, okay? Safety tools that can be needed. So that can be the, wear, the mask you need to wear. That can also be the plexiglass one. So the vichier you can buy. Uh, to be used in the salon. My sister, she used uh, the vichier sometimes when they're gonna do the eyebrows, when they're gonna color the eyelashes and when they're gonna cut the beard of the, um, the gents, uh, then she wear the plastic uh, vichier or the plexiglass vichier. Uh, otherwise she don't use anything as I said before. Gloves, some uh, countries recommend you have to wear gloves under all the, um, the service. So that's something we have to maybe get used to. So if you, uh, I think it's in US, they actually recommend to wear gloves, if I'm not wrong. So those of you that is there and uh, soon maybe gonna open up, if you have a mannequin head, uh, maybe start to practice to cut <laughs> or uh, just to practice to see how it is to work with the gloves because of course it's gonna be a little bit different compared to what we normally do. Safety glasses you can use also, this is recommended for those that do like more cosmetic uh, things. So, so those of you that have the spas connected to the salon. Cleaning cloth can also be used with the alcohol inside, so you have something to, um, to clean and to disinfect even the hands with. And then of course we have the sanitizer from Davenis you can use, but of course you can use all kind of uh, sanitizer inside the salon. And sorry, somebody's writing here, let me see here. 
<laughs> Louis say cutting hair with gloves. Yeah, Louis, I'm sorry, but that's uh, that can be from some um, some countries. That's what they recommend to do. Or that's actually not recommendation. That's what you have to do. So again, follow your your government. Okay. Uh, so another thing I think that is very important for us to stay safe in the salon. We need to be aware of if uh, our staff in anyhow feel not uh, well in the morning, they don't come to work just to be sure everybody stays safe. And the same is actually for the clients. So we need to do the best practice. So first of all, we, uh, I think this is where we need our social media to, it can be very nice for those of you that use social media on your web page, uh, post like what is very important. And this way uh, it is here actually could be very well. So for example, clients who uh, are ill, do not feel well, do not come in for the appointments as a preventive measure, okay? So we do not treat you if you have cough, cold or fever. Our staff are sent home if they have the same symptoms. So this is another way you can communicate on your website. This is like what we do for the salon and this is what you have to do for us so everybody feels safe, right? When you arrive to a salon, you'll be asked to wash your hands when arriving to the salon. For you and your, uh, your safety, we will wear a mask to prevent any transfer virus. Again, it's options. We will not shake hands or hug as normal we do to risk the transfer virus. Our stylists will wash their hands before they start your personal service. The service station and the washing unit will be sanitized after each client to guarantee the highest standard of prevention of any transfer virus. So this kind of point you could put up on your website so the clients are a little bit prepared when they come to the salon. My sister did that and she said it was very helpful because she didn't have to explain so much to the clients, uh, mainly to the older clients that maybe don't read uh, so much what's going on. But uh, she said generally when she put that on, also the clients feel that was uh, more taking care of them and they feel they were feeling more safe. Uh, Anna writing here, we're trying to ask our hairdressing to not wear gloves or hairdressing as a make the recommendation to our government. Yeah. So again, I think it's uh, all about we can try to, to ask for, for things for the government to help to, to make it easier for us. Uh, I must admit, if first of all, if the hair had just been washed and shampooed, right? We just wash our hands. I mean, what kind of risk could there be? I cannot see the risk, but yeah, sometimes I think also uh, we create more uh, trash that is not so good for the future. But for what reason do we need to do it sometimes, right? <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Um, when you're going to do the service, of course, we need to pay attention that every time we use a new wash cape, okay? We cannot recycle the cape. I know some salons, they use the same cape maybe two, three times on one client. Don't do that anymore. It's not recommended, okay? Best thing is actually, if you can get the disposable capes for each client, it's very easy because you can imagine now we need new towels for all the clients every time you do something. We need new capes every time. Even the aprons we need to wash much more often compared to what we not used to do. So there'll be a lot of washing to do. So if you use those disposal things to start with, it can make it a little bit easier for you until you get into the way to do things in your salon. Another thing I come up with, you remember in the, um, the barber shops in old times, you have this neck paper around uh, before we put on the cape. That could be another way to even, you know, just have a higher safety in my salon. So there is not direct uh, contact with my cape and the neck of the, the client. So it's just something extra I put in there that could maybe be useful for you guys. As I said before, new, to new wash towel or disposable towel you can use, of course. When you do the washing, uh, it has to be minimum over 80%, uh, 80 Celsius uh, degrees to kill any kind of bacteria. But again, here, there can be different kind of uh, recommendation from the government. I saw even a government, they say 90 degrees, and you can imagine even 80. Your black uh, cotton capes, they are not going to be black for many days. They're going to be more gray, gray, or half gray, half white. So have that in mind when you start to wash them, okay? Also, don't use the neck brush anymore, but use uh, the, uh, the towel that you've been using or uh, take a cotton piece to remove any kind of hair because again, on the neck brush is a good way to transfer uh, again the virus because we have sweat and the skin connected together. Oh, something, yeah. Coffee and snakes, uh, snacks, uh, snakes, snacks. Uh, 
be aware of some countries they don't recommend to serve anything. I think again here in the, if I'm not wrong, in the state, they don't recommend to serve anything for the clients. They just come and they have their service done and they leave the salon again, okay? Anyhow, you need to have them wash immediately after in a dish, uh, with dish soap and a hot water. Um, you also have to give the clients, a, we recommend here a disposable napkin uh, when you start to have the service, because it could happen to certainly have to cough, right? Not because they have the virus, but because now we also have the, here in Italy, eczema. Europe, we have all the summer coming through now. So the spring, the summer, there's also a lot of allergies coming through. So certainly you maybe need to sneeze and you maybe don't have broad uh, napkins with you. So just as a safety, so we don't have it everywhere in the salon. If uh, you give exam server coffee with cookies or whatever that can come with the coffee sometimes, chocolate, whatever, if it's not packed into plastic, uh, don't give them maybe three biscuits and a cup of coffee because then when you're going to remove it and they didn't eat all the biscuits, then maybe some salons, they take the two biscuits or the one biscuit they didn't eat, they take it for the next clients. But again, it could be a way to con uh, contaminate uh, things. So really just give them, example, one cup of coffee and ask them if they want the biscuits in that case. If you, example, offer them kind of fruits or tea, uh, don't let them select it by themselves. Ask them what they want and you take it for them so you're sure it stays safe as possible. Everywhere I've been looking so far, no magazines or books or any kind of brochures are, um, are recommended to be in the salon because it's the perfect way to transfer the virus. So don't have that. If you have iPads, of course, in the salon, that's available in some salons today, you need to clean them every time. But I must admit, if it was my salon, I would remove them because it just extra work for you guys. Think about the more you give to the clients, the more you have to clean. To clean. And you will, be, um, you will find out very soon how much time you will spend on cleaning and you will be very tired, I'm very sure. When it comes to the styling well-being products, of course, here we have to avoid any kind of cross cementation too. So clean bottles very well if you bring things together. And even now they are paying attention to example jars, so example where we have the waxes for the clients, so for the, you know, the, for the styling products. Instead of take the finger in, drop that now, but use example a spatula of plastic, of wood, whatever you have. So we really try to avoid any kind of cross termination. So far, I haven't seen it happen, to be honest, when, uh, what I'm aware of, but it's more to make the clients feel much more safety that we really play, uh, pay attention to those kind of things. And then, of course, we need to clean all the products uh, during the day, or at least when we finish, so we're sure they're clean and perfect. There's no transfer of a uh, product. The same is also, you know, we used to, example, take the products and show to the clients so they can see, they can feel it. Remember, if you do that, you need to clean it after when you, before you're going to put it back to where you took it from. So have that in mind, the way you do things. As I said before, follow the local government rules. And in cases the government don't have any kind of uh, rules setting up for you guys, then we recommend examples to keep every second chair free in the salon, so to respect two meter distance, because here also is very depending from government to government. Some recommend one meter, some two meters, some recommend a certain amount of square meters. Example in Austria, you need to have nine square meters per client. So you can imagine that cannot be so many clients in a small salon. Timing can also be a um, problem uh, because you can also have some um, limit of how many clients you can have in the salon. As I said before, exam in Austria, nine square meter per one client. That means certainly if you have a big salon, you can maybe not have all the staff there working at the same time. Because first of all, let's say I have a, I can, show, I can just show you a picture, okay? <clears throat> this is our test space in, uh, in Italy that I tried to put up the way that I think will be very effective in your salon. Here we have like 10 working station. So we have five working station with two, two, working, uh, say, two working places on each, uh, one of each side, right? So there's 10 seats. What we done here, we remove every second seat. So there's no opportunity for clients to sit in the wrong chair because if you have all your seats, all the chairs in the salon, but you only can use every second one because of the distance, the social distance we need to keep, then sometimes it can happen that you are taking the clients from the wash over to the chair and you maybe the phone is ringing and you go and take the phone and the clients sit in the wrong chair. So you need to transfer the clients to back to the chair that she supposed to sit in then you need to access that chair you've just been seated in. So again, to avoid any kind of too much cleaning, remove those things you don't need. 
So this way here, you can see, let's say in my salon here, that was working normally 10 people. Now I cannot have 10 people working at the same time. So now we also maybe need to expand the working hours. So working in shift. So it could be like the first shift is the morning for seven hours or eight hours or five hours, I don't know. And in the afternoon, they'll come the next team to take over the chairs. That's the only way we can actually do things. I also have an uh, example, uh, talk with my sister about how she could uh, do things with staff. And it could also here be nice to maybe do a meeting with your staff, uh, asking about how they will feel about uh, to make an excellent service to the clients. What do I mean about that? I talked to my sister about what she have think about when she's going to open up the salon. And she said, uh, oh, you know what? I'm not so afraid of my clients because they are very regular clients and they are very trustworthy. They always come to me. Uh, I said, okay, that's good. But what now example when they start to call you and you have no time the first week or maybe also after 10 or 12 days is the first time you have an appointment. That client sees regular, she come to you, but now you're not regular to her because you cannot really give her the service she want unless she want to wait for two weeks more, but she's already waited for like six weeks. I said, what are you gonna, how are you gonna handle that? And she said, ah, oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, I didn't think about that. So another way you could maybe do in the salon is maybe say, guys, what if we work maybe seven days a week in the salon? It's not what we normally do. It's just for a short period of three to four weeks. But just to be sure we get all the clients fast through and we really support them because they support us for so many years. And now we need to support them in somehow because they still support us, right? So we can run our business. So try to think out by yourself how you could uh, maybe extend your business hours and maybe even work seven, it could even be seven days a week, but you work in three shifts in the salon. So you maybe just work five hours a day, but you work seven days a week for maybe two, three weeks. Just another way to, to get the business running, right? Because I'm also sure that a lot of you after closing the business, you are, you are really lacking of uh, the money and you need to go on, right? So I think it's very now our, even me as a staff member in Devonis, I'm very flexible in the way we're working at the moment because I don't want the th bad things to happen. So we all have to be a little flexible, I think. This is the salon where you get your washing units and in the test space, we actually have five washing units. So depending on the social distance from each government, it could be on the first picture, you can see there's for sure two meters behind the, be, between the clients, no problem. And in the other one, there's uh, only one meter between the clients. So again, depending on each government, you need to find out how it can work for you. I do also see in some countries, they actually put in plexiglass between each working station in between each uh, washing unit. So you actually can use all of them at the same time. But again, of course, it's uh, extra work. It's the extra cost you have to expend in this, uh, to spend in the salon. So um, yeah, just some options that I can tell you. Option for the protection for the clients, <clears throat> excuse me. The mask, it can be something you can offer to the clients. Uh, it can also be that you have to say to the clients, they have to wear a mask to come to the salon. Here in Italy example, I can tell you when we go out in the supermarket, we have to wear gloves and we have to wear a mask. The gloves are provided by the supermarket, but the mask you have to bring yourself. If you don't have a mask, you don't go into the supermarket. That's how simple it is. You remember we had the this year for the frames, uh, to cut the frames, right, in Devonis. And I'm sure a lot of you still have it maybe in your salon. Now is another way you can use them. So if you have clients where they're a little more afraid and, you know, oh, what about my eyes and stuff like that? And there could be some of you cutting the frames now to make more protection for the clients, you could actually put the vichier over the clients. Just put it down as I've done here. And I tell you, it cover fully the face, the plastic one and the, um, the mask. But I must also admit uh, when I did this picture here, it didn't take so long time, but it was very hot. So I'm not so sure so many clients uh, would like the idea. As I said before, <clears throat> how to organize yourself when the clients come to the salon, because we need to really rethink that. So when it's very important uh, to talk with the receptionist or when everybody may be going to greet um, to greetings to the clients, that we all do it the same way. So first of all, check that, um, that uh, the service is uh, right booked. So when the clients uh, call the salon, really find out what is what she needs to have done, how much time is needed, and re-ensure her that she needs to be on time. Because now, in the, I mean, in the past, we, were quite, we could be flexible in our uh, booking, right? So the clients was 10, 15 minutes late. 
we could maybe handle them still, right? But now you can imagine if you need 50 minutes just to clean between each client and one client is 50 minutes late, whole your day gonna be very stressful. So we really need to be sure the client is aware of if the appointment is a 10, it's a 10, it's not five or 10 minutes later because that could be an issue. Also uh, inform the clients about the procedure in the salon, what they have to do, how they have to react. As I said before, post that on your website so it's very understandable for them. In some cases, like in Denmark, there need to be distance uh, marks on the floor and there need to be two meters between where they can stand the client. So you can also do this kind of service for clients. Uh, first of all, also, you can even buy a mat with antibacterial material that you could have on the doorsteps because I think some, I mean, I think it's going a little bit too much, but they, they even say if this virus could also transfer through the shoes, right? If somebody have a sneeze on the floor and blah, blah, blah. So it could be another way to do things. You can also buy now the temperature without the machine, without taking uh, touching the skin, but just measure the distance, the temperature, just to be sure that nobody have fever. Back here again to the supermarket in Italy, they do that on all of us. When we come there, they take the temperature before we're allowed to come inside. Coats and stuff like that, of course, have to be stored uh, away, or you could even ask the clients to bring uh, the plastic bag and they put um, the wardrobe down there, or even what you can do is even ask them to leave it in the car. If the parking is outside the salon, leave everything out there so they don't bring in a lot of things. You have to, of course, provide the, the clients with the gown. You can also provide them with the mask and the gloves, as I said before. And then you record, you, they have to go and wash their hands before you do anything. So the first thing you ask them is to go and wash their hands or use the gel sanitizer that you have on the reception desk. Briefly, uh, tell them where they can be seated. So if, um, if they come to the sofa, they tell them where to sit in the sofa because they cannot sit next to each other. So they need to be social distance and they have to be aware of that by themselves. Every time you work them around, or walk them around in the salon, you move them, remember you have to clean and be sure everything is sterilized. I'm sorry I'm repeating this a lot, but that, that's the focus at the moment. Um, after making the, cutting the, the client's hair, of course, when you move everything, you can even, uh, you know, the swiffer that you can use to in the, at your house, to clean your house with, you can even so soak the swiffer into antibacterial um, liquid. And then it's an easy way to eliminate any kind of bacteria on the floor in a fast way without to do too much. Every time you finish all your service, put the accessory away and then you sterilize them. And then you, of course, um, uh, throw away your gloves or if you recycle the gloves be sure you clean them either with soap or you again sterilize them before you're taking them off have that in mind every time when the clients go to pay pay attention to they don't touch the reception in case they do remember you clean it uh, ask them about uh, pay with credit card and not by cash because by cash we don't know where the money have been uh, earlier so this is another issue be sure that you clean the credit card machine every time after they have been used it. Clean the desk, whatever it is. And then of course, uh, you have to remove all kind of things that was on the um, working station when you are uh, treating the client. So there's nothing remaining there. Uh, when you do the consultation, consultation, of course, keep the distance, don't sit uh, next to clients, don't sit face to face as we normally have recommended endeavors to do. Stand always behind the clients is the best way to keep the social distance. Um, every time you use whatever it is uh, to examine, you brush the hair just to do the analyze of the hair. Again, remember, you have to wash that brush. So try again to think about what you're doing every time. When you do any kind of aesthetic service, so it could be like uh, the, um, the beard, the eyebrows, whatever, use the visor so you're sure you have a protection for yourself, but also so the clients feel very safe because it's not, of course, not only for us, but it's also for the clients. A health procedure you also can ask to do the reception, uh, the receptionist can do, or you all simply do is simply ask the clients those few questions when they come to the salon. Um, if they have any kind of coughing in the day before they come, if they had any kind of fever lately, if they've been around anyone that could have any kind of system of those symptoms that have remind of the coronavirus, because even you've been close to some people, maybe you don't have it yourself, but you could maybe start to develop something, right? 
And also again, ask them if they're living with anyone who was sick for the or quarantine by the virus because this is another issue. This is very personal questions, but I think now everybody is open for those kind of things. And as I again said before, you can also take the temperature um, for the clients, but even for yourself, for the staff, every morning you take temperatures, basically those of you that maybe have big salons, invest in the um, thermometer that is infrared. So you all take the temperature on each other in the morning, so you're sure nobody have kind of like a slightly fever. If any kind of slightly fever, you have to be sent home. You have to go home, okay? We also try to do some daily cleaning card here. So uh, what to clean, frequency, how to clean, responsible person, notes. So we can just take the first one here, example, waiting area and entrance door after each client's frequency, how to clean, clean with sanitizer spray and disposable paper. Responsible, everybody in the salon. And you can, of course, use disposable clothes, uh, gloves, sorry, for those kind of service. Those gloves, I will also say, after you finish, because we cannot just put on every time one pair of gloves and throw them away, right? It's gonna be too expensive, too much waste. Use a sanitizer on them before you take them off and then keep it so it's your gloves so you don't share the gloves too in the, inside the salon, okay? There is another one here. So the clock room example for the customer. So daily clean with sanitizer spray. Everyone use disposable gloves. So there's all kind of recommendation here how often you should do things. But again, follow up with your local uh, government to see how often you need to do things. Except the whole salon, maybe it's just before your opening and maybe after closing, you need to clean the salon. Again, depending on the government, what they recommend. Social media communication, I think is very important. So for those of you that use social media, co uh, social media communication, really write a nice uh, way, uh, what kind of things, a uh, procedure you, the clients can expect to see when they come to the salon, what kind of um, prevention you're doing in the salon, how you're treating the staff, how you ensure that everybody stays safe, how you clean the tools, just all those kind of things that really make the clients feel safe. And also it can also, again, it can attract new clients to your salon because they're really now looking for who is really taking care of uh, me when there is this kind of um, environment at the moment. In Devonist, we have done the kind of uh, cards and uh, stickers you can put on your windows, you can put on displays. So uh, different kind of we care, uh, simple steps to stay safe in your salon and so on. So in salon communication that you can get. <laughs> oh, thank you, Anna. I'm glad you like it. Thank you very much. Um, let me see here. So this is the stickers you see to put on the mirrors. This salon has been sanitized with love. Your safety is our priority. To let you feel safe, we sanitize furniture and tools between appointments. So all those kind of things, that's nice. And even those stickers here, you could even put on your social media so the clients can see that there is nothing to be scared about to go to the salon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another way to do things can be like this. Those are not so nice, as you can see, it's not done by Devonness. But in the Denmark, the government uh, doing the weekend, as I said before, it went very fast to open the salon in Denmark. It was just three days, they literally the salon had to prepare themselves. So uh, my sister, she was, I asked my sister, what do, they, what do they tell you? What do they tell you? Let me know, let me know. And she said, that, nothing, there's nothing at the moment. But then Saturday night, there certainly pop up things they could download. So they were asked, to download those uh, posters. They have to be uh, posted in the windows around the salon. So, I mean, I mean, this is official things from the government. So even here, check your local government is there's official things you have to put up in the salon. But I was very amazed about what they did in Denmark because it was not only Danish. It, I think there was uh, 20 different language for the salons to put up those uh, things because today we know everybody is multicultural everywhere in the world, right? So that can still be people coming to the salon that maybe don't know the local language. And that's a nice way to actually can still read about what they do in the salon. Lou is saying here, Brian, will these Mara labels be available in other languages? French, for example. You know what, Louis, I must admit, I don't know. But you know what, I will try to find out and I will write uh, to you, Louis. So I will post it on the damage education, okay? Very good, uh, good comment. Um, so 
tips and ideas. After talking with my sister, um, she gave me some nice ideas and uh, thoughts. So she said to me, instead of have your, you know, many of you, we have our trolley, right? And on the trolley, we have all our tools. But she said, you need to remove all the tools. You need to clean all the tools. You need to clean the whole trolley, if that's the way you work. So she actually bought some um, small trays where there can just be a few things because that are other things. Maybe some of you used to have like three scissors, four combs and uh, 20 clips on the trolley. Now put only what you need, guys, because you have to clean it every time. So she took a tray, she found some nice tray and she went actually to uh, Ikea to find some really cool trays and uh, that just could fit into the trolley. And she put her tools there and every time she finished, she just took away the tray. She put over all the alcohol to sanitize it. <clears throat> and that's another thing. When you're gonna do that, especially in the beginning, it's not so, so bad. But when you do it maybe 10 times in a day, it starts to smell a lot and you get really a uh, problem with the nose and the throat, my sister said. So put on a mask or put up the towel for your face when you spray over because it's alcohol, so it will of course, immediately. Then you leave it there, you go back and you, rem you remove everything that's been used for the client. So the gloves uh, she maybe been using, the mask she was wearing, that the cup, whatever. Remove that. Then you swipe the floor, you clean it with alcohol and soap if it's recommended, if it's needed. You clean the chair, the working station with alcohol. Then you can prepare the cape and the neck paper and the towel for the next clients. Then you sanitize your gloves before you remove them so they can hang dry for next time you're gonna use them. And then you wash your hands and then you, again, use a moisturizing cream. It could be the oil hand cream, right? Drug. And uh, to protect your skin, because as I said before, with all this alcohol, you will see a lot of, uh, of dry hands, that's for sure. But most important is find a way for everybody you do the same procedure because my sister said to me, that was the, the worst things in the beginning. After one client, she did it this way. After the next client, she did it another way. And the first day she was so stressed because she was checking up if she did things as she's supposed to do. So follow a way to do it. Do the same rhythm from the beginning because if you get into that habit, it's become much easier for you. And again, as I said before, you only have 10 to 15 minutes, unless of course you take more time, but more time is also money, right? So we have to evaluate that too. So calculate the extra cleaning when you do the booking of the clients. You have to be aware of that. Uh, my sister, or I can actually see, I follow a Danish uh, hairdressing uh, communication on Facebook. And uh, what they all do, they, they have now made a service chart for a hygiene service charge. And all the clients are okay to pay. Nobody has so far complained in my sister's salon. And even on the Facebook side, I haven't seen anyone writing something bad. And they charge between three to four euro for each client. Because as you all know, if you have to buy masks, gloves, sanitizer, I mean, there's so many things you have to buy, it's a big investment. At least you can get some of the money back, right? Compared to if you just charge nothing. Have also in mind if you go to a restaurant in Italy, it's normally, <laughs> I was shocked when the first time I come to Italy to out, I was like, what, how come it's so expensive? And then soon I found out like every time you, you for each person to eat that, you pay two to three euro extra just for the plate and the, the forks and the knife and the glass because they need to clean it. In Denmark, it doesn't exist. So I was like, wow, what's that? But you can do the same now in the salon example. Uh, Angela writing here. Sometimes I will do a quick dry frame stream to, I have to wash hair first to do this. Um, no, I think if, if it's just a trim of the, um, the frames, um, Angela, I will just uh, quickly trim the frames. I'll just use a diddy spray or water spray. You can put on the visier from the Demoness water spray it and then quickly trim the frames and then done. Because the more you take the clients around to the salon, the more you have to clean. So, and that's not worth it, okay? So think about that. Um, also remember, I know in a lot of salons, you never book maybe lunchtime. You don't maybe book the break, uh, the coffee break because you find a way to do it in between. But uh, I can understand for a lot of hairdressers, it is very stressful. It's very um, different to go to work now. So they all really recommend now put in some uh, breaks in your list during the day because 
otherwise you will never manage to get coffee. You never manage to get lunch because as I said before, it's just one client maybe come five minutes late. Whole the day gonna be different, okay? Um, yes, Angela, you can do dry haircuts, that's for sure. No problem. And beta writing here, just one important thing. So I would like to highlight when you spray alcohol, you need to friction ease tool to really sanitize it just by spraying alcohol. That's true. Of course, you need to do that kind of things. But you will see uh, if you, even if the Caesar, if you just open up the Caesar when you spray it, then it's fine. And of course, also what you cannot option is you have a big um, uh, basket where you have a lot of alcohol inside as you used to have in the barber shops and you can put everything in there. That's another way you can do it. So for sure. Uh, I think Angela, there is no, nobody knows if the virus can live in the, in the hair for 24 hours. I haven't seen anything about that anywhere. So that I must admit, I don't know. You have to ask a, a specialist, I'm a hairdresser. So when it comes to that part, I cannot tell you. But again, have in mind, um, I think still the risk is minimum, uh, to be honest, uh, it's, it's more the eyes and so on. But again, remember, you can wear a visier yourself. If you want to feel much safer, you can wear the visier and uh, you should be safe. And you can again use gloves if you don't want to have contact with the dirty hair example, uh, wear the gloves. So, just some tips and ideas, and we, later on, uh, in, uh, we are working on something that you soon will see in your coming, your local area. It is uh, just some uh, other way you can actually do some uh, extra service in the salon, but a very express service. Some of your salons, uh, or some of your government will maybe say the, sal the clients can only be in the salon for a certain amount of time, right? So that means you maybe don't have so much time as you normally have for the clients. It can also be that some of the clients don't maybe have so much money, so they are really looking into how much money they want to spend. And it can also be that some of the clients um, don't want to spend so much time in the salon because they're afraid of the virus. That can be another way, right? So example, I just come up some, with some few uh, service you could do in the salon while you're cutting the hair. Um, just a second, I'm just going to go out. I can see some people writing here in the chat. Anna, thank you for the information. Have a good day. Thank you, Anna. Bye-bye. <laughs> no, Angela, no, you're not a pain at all. That's a good question you come up with. Don't worry. So what you can do, example, you can do a chemical shampoo and conditioner. So let's say some clients maybe come to the salon. They actually, the hair needs a little bit more like a little bit intensity of color. They maybe just want to enhance the reflex a little bit, but they don't have time or they don't want to spend so much money, then you could just take the shampoo from Alchemic, apply the conditioner while you're cutting the hair. So you put on the conditioner, you cut the hair with the conditioner in, and then of course, when you finish the haircut, you rinse out the conditioner. It's another way how you also can gain a little bit extra money in the salon. So the hair looks beautiful, shiny, it's refreshed the color a little bit. Of course, it's not something that's gonna last very long, but it could be those clients that just want something to feel like a little bit wow after they have been locked in for so long time, right? Another thing you could do, you could take the nourishing um, family, natural tech, and the finest pigment. So this is what we call uh, make me strong and shiny. So you could use the nourishing shampoo, and then on tall dry hair, you apply the keratin wonder. The, you know now the new nourishing line is a change, a new family. And in the keratin wonder, if the hair is very damaged, you can even add the booster into that. And then you put it on the hair, and you leave it on the hair, and you cut the hair, and then you rinse off after you finish the haircut. When you finish the haircut, you could apply on top of that, if it's needed, you could apply the gloss mixture with the vegetarian conditioner uh, or the mask, depending on what kind of hair you're working with. So example, 20 ml of the um, mask or the conditioner and 40 ml of finest pigments gloss. And then um, you continue cutting the hair during this process. So you see, you don't spend any extra kind of time. And the only thing you need to add here uh, it's actually the finest pigment. So, but again, it's another way to earn and gain a little more money in a fast time in the salon. Then you have the plum and shine, which is the replumbing family recommend here. 
and you can take the again the replumbing shampoo and after that on tall dry hair you take the replumbing super active because it's a moisturizing treatment you take 20 gram of that you take 40 gram of the finest pigment gloss and then you apply it to the hair and you start to cutting the hair and then you rinse out when you finish so you both uh, hydrate the hair but you also make it super super shiny and you didn't literally spend a lot of time it may be this treatment here gonna take you maybe five minutes to apply not even so you see it's a fast way to gain a little bit extra money so add on and the clients have amazing hair when they go up in the salon. Finally, I come up with another idea to introduce uh, on protection where we have the beautifying treatment. You know, the beautifying treatment, you normally will spend um, 12 ml of uh, on protection and uh, 70 ml of water. You mix together and you put on the hair. And then on top of that, you're going to put another treatment, a conditioner on a mask. <clears throat> But what we can do here is just like an extra free service because also some clients are waiting for a very long time to come to you guys, right? So we are very grateful that they come to my salon, they still want to come to my salon. So we maybe want to give them a little bit like a gift, but we also know that money at the moment is probably a bit tight. So instead of using this uh, 92 ml of uh, liquid that you have, you can take a day dip um, spray empty that one, clean it very well, and you can put the 12 ml of on protection, 70 ml of water into the little spray, and then after you shampoo the hair, you spray it all over the hair, and then you start to cut the hair. After 10 minutes, you put on the most suitable conditioner or a mask, and then you continue the, continue the cut, and when you finish, you rinse everything off, and you've done a free treatment. Normally, we use whole this liquid amount on one client. Now we're just going to spray it on the client. So maybe from, from a, we can say from a one uh, mixture, you maybe can put that on up to nine to 10 clients. That means it's not going to cost you a lot of money. Anyhow, the condition, the mask you need to put on the hair anyhow. So in the, the only thing you need to spend money on is the unprotection. But again, you spread it over so many clients. And there's another way to introduce, the, uh, we can say the more intense uh, on, to, on protection beautifying treatments to the clients. So next time they can they come to salon, they maybe want to have the treatment repeated, but this time you do it as we normally should do it. So it's much more intense. So it's a nice way to introduce on protection to the clients, but also an easy way and cheap way for you guys to give them something for free without they're gonna cost you a lot of money. Just some tips and tricks, okay? Finally, I want to just show with you what is uh, left in our Davinis education this week. You will see tonight there is um, uh, Tom. He will be live at 8 o'clock on Facebook. You will see him doing cutting class today. Tomorrow I'll be back again, do exactly the same I did uh, for you now. So that's probably not so <laughs> interesting for you to see it again. Francesco is also live tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Francesco again 5.30 and then we have Jesus Oliver. He opened up his secrets of style of soul philosophy and avant-garde work at eight o'clock in the evening. And remember all times you see here in East, is Italy time. Thursday, you will find Rock LeMay from Canada doing his uh, white hair mixology at four o'clock Parma time. And Ashley in the evening, as always, she will be on uh, Facebook again, eight o'clock in the evening. And finally, Friday, you find Francesco doing again business at 10 o'clock. Rock, he's gonna do the same class again at Thursday but this time at 12 o'clock. And then you also have again, nine o'clock in the evening. So he will be the full time working. I can see the next few days here. So I would like to say thank you to all of you for joining our class today. Thank you for joining Devon's uh, education. And if you have any kind of uh, questions, whatever, I stay here for a few minutes. So you can just, uh, yeah, you can talk with me if you want because I have unmuted you most, you, most of you. And uh, I hope you have enjoyed the information. I hope you find it useful. And um, except for that, I want to wish you a very nice uh, morning, evening, or whatever you are in the world. Stay safe. Remember to wash your hands. And I hope to see you around very soon again. Okay, take care. Bye, Marina. You